Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tony Bacigalupo, and I've got uh, my friends Pete and Amanda here, and we are going to be talking about... Oh, that was a great simul wave, guys. Wow. Just like, like we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> We're that cool, right? Uh, the three of us are working at Bantam Tools based up in Peekskill, New York, and... Uh, we wanted to put together a little video conversation to just talk about the basics, the fundamentals of CNC machining. We're all working real hard right now on helping to roll out the new Bantam Tools desktop CNC milling machine, uh, which is just an absolute beast. It's so cool. It's, you can see it over Pete's shoulder uh, in his view. I've got a PCB machine, which you can see is kind of in this other camera view over here. Uh, so we might reference this to play with at some point. Um, but I thought that I would get you guys together because you've got some experience in this world, uh, but you also remember what it was like to be beginners in this world. And I am a total beginner in this world. When I first joined, I was seeing a lot of jargon being thrown around. I was having to look up even words that I find to be laughably simple now, even something like what is an end mill, uh, I, I had to I had to really uh, start from scratch when I started just very recently. And so um, I thought that as we're going to have so many more people receiving this new machine uh, since they've ordered it, that we would just try to clear up any kinds of questions or um, make it easier for people to understand how to break into this world from like, very, very scratch, very beginning. So what we're gonna do in this conversation is just talk about this a little bit, talk about some of the terminology, talk about some of the fundamentals from the most basic and accessible standpoint possible, and then identify ways we could get into it in more deep detail from there. How's that sound to you, you guys, Pete and Amanda? Does that sound good? Sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, let's do this. Great, so first off, why don't, the two of you introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, your role in the company, uh, your relationship to this uh, world when you first got into it. And, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of go into it from there. Maybe Pete, if you'd like to go first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I'm Pete. I'm the guy that does the videos you've all been seeing on Instagram and other places like that. Um, I basically CNC was a completely new thing to me until I started working with this company. Uh, which was a couple years ago. So I've been learning very publicly uh, on the PCB mill, uh, kind of learning that and going alongside and just kind of diving into a very wonderful community, a very supportive community of people that are very knowledgeable and very talented. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to say on that, Tony. What, does that, does that do it? You also have been producing some really slick looking videos for Band Tools, just some incredibly uh, well shot, just beautiful things. You, you seem to be looking for ways to really push the limits of what's possible with the machine. So oh, yeah. do you want to speak to a little bit about kind of what thought process you put into a, a project when you, when you want to spin up a new project? Well, first and foremost, it's got to be something that anybody that wants the machine would be interested in, right? I mean, that's what we all are. And when, when, it comes, you know, when it comes down to it, we're all machinists or uh, interested in machining. So you gotta make something that's kind of cool in that regard. And then I'm also in the video side of it, I also gotta do something that looks cool. You know, that's, that's fun to watch being made that has some interest in it being made. And so there's, it's, it's kind of fun to be able to craft two things simultaneously and make them kind of work um, and intertwine. Uh, so that way together uh, you get you get a nice little, little little hybrid creative project where it's not just the video, but it's also uh, the thing that you made. And hopefully it's something that's usable and something that's inspiring and that other people in the community can build off of. And so that's usually one of the things I'm thinking of when I'm coming up with these projects is, A, what can I do in a short amount of time, uh, which is a lot easier now with the CNC machine, uh, the Phantom Tools desktop CNC milling machine, because it's very powerful. Um, and so it's what can I do in a short amount of time and what can I do that is going to um, hopefully inspire some creativity um, among others in this community, because the, you guys are all fabulous, fabulous makers and I'm in awe at some of the stuff that comes out. Uh, and Amanda's very good at curating some of those things, kind of like saying, hey guys, did you see this? Did you see so-and-so? Do you see what they made? This is really cool. Hey Pete, you should do this. And I'm like going, 
Uh, okay, <laughs> let me let me read up on that. <laughs> let me see if I can get anywhere close. I love I, that. It's too. usually a, like, it's like usually at twelve in the morning too when I like email you guys. I'm like, dude, check this out. <laughs> and Pete's probably like, what are you doing <laughs> on social media at twelve in the morning? But anyway, I think that's a great segue to you, Amanda. Oh no. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm Amanda. And I've been with Phantom Tools now for about coming up on two years. And like Pete, I was totally new to CNC machining. I had some idea of digital fabrication. I was, I was familiar with 3D printing and how that worked. Um, so like I was semi-familiar with, you know, modeling in CAD, but like programming CAM was totally new to me. Um, and then, so really everything that I, I have learned about CNC machining has been through um, my work at Bantam Tools and, you know, just a lot of it has been, you know, talking with Pete, talking with our R&D team, our production team, talking with Zach um, and stuff like that. And then like Pete, you know, really diving into the community you know, looking at people like, you know, what are people doing on Instagram? What are they talking, what are they talking about? What are they doing? Um, how are they talking about it? I think to your point, Tony, all like the jargon, that was, that was a huge learning curve for me when I just started out. Um, because I, I, I remember I had to Google <laughs> more than my fair share of stuff. Um, but in terms of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, Pete is the man behind the camera. And I am usually the one that is, you know, writing the copy for our Instagram posts, or all our social media posts. Um, whenever you reach out, more than likely, I am that person um, answering your questions on the DM and the comments. Um, and I, I really enjoy chatting with you guys. I think that it's, it's super awesome to, to engage with everybody and just see, you know, what you, what they're all interested in learning more about and, you know, how, what they're taking away from, I think the, the various, tutorials and um, projects that we're creating. And so, you know, the, the twofold, the, the second part to what I do a lot of is uh, all our project guides, support articles, I, I write those. And so it's, it's been one of those challenges has been, you know, and I think this is actually the beauty about being a, a beginner. It's like, or starting from the beginning, because, you know, I have to first understand the concept and I have to take like kind of sometimes a very like complicated concept and then break it down into something that's very digestible for other people to understand. And then, you know, for me, what I'm very fortunate to have is Pete's awesome, like assets and videos and all that stuff to work with and work off of. Um, Cause I can literally be like, this is what I'm talking about. And then this is the thing that I'm talking about. Look at this thing that Pete made, you know, it's, it's really great to have that in there the two of you have made for an amazing team for me kind of coming into this new seeing how you're able to produce those materials to explain to somebody in an easy to understand way both with words and with visuals the various aspects that go into being able to work with this machine and so that is super useful to us for the scope of this conversation because we're going to be diving into a lot of these things. And so my first question to both of you is just from the highest level. And this is a little bit of a selfish question because I need to be able to understand this better. How do you explain to people what a CNC milling machine is? And I mean, people who do not know anything about this world, because I have tried to do this and it has proven rather elusive. And I, I, tr I want to try to explain it in a way that's, um, not inaccurate, you know, but 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 that can be understood in terms that are very difficult for somebody who might not know this world. So yeah, Pete, you look, you're smiling. You seem to have. I, a I am because I've had to explain this numerous times. Uh, first to my mom about five or six times, then to my dad a couple times, and then to everybody I ever met, uh, met in public. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you work at Bantam Tools? Yeah. Oh, what do you guys do? Can I, can I buy hardware from you? Well, not exactly, but somewhat. So the, the, the question always is, and I'm laughing because I, I'm curious, and I actually kind of want to toss this to Amanda because I'm curious what, what, how you would explain it first, because I've got a pretty good answer that I worked with 
that yeah. I worked on with some other folks in the company, but I'm curious yeah. what you got. That. Um, I mean, this is like Pete, I think a lot of people in my circles, I, I come from a, a book publishing world. So like I deal with people who literally work with words 24 seven. And so some things that I like to, the first question I always ask is, is um, are you familiar with 3D printing? And if somebody goes, yes, I'll go, well, you know how with 3D printing, you print up with CNC machining, you subtract. Um, and then if somebody doesn't actually know what 3D printing is, what I kind of, how I kind of explain it is you start off with a block of material. So it's like a blank slate. And then that, I, the machine has a, a cutter that just cuts into this, this block of material and will cut away and, and make this part. And then, you know, so, and then usually like the, the best example I give that, cause it's, it's pretty straightforward is like, I want to machine a sphere. I will design a sphere in a, in a software system that I can then pull into our machine software. And then that soft or that machine software will tell that our CNC machine that it wants to mill a sphere. You put the block material in the machine, it mills it away and it mills the sphere. It's a very like generalized thing. That's usually when the light bulb clicks and they start to ask questions. Then I usually just show them our Instagram page and the light bulb really goes off. Um, <laughs> Cause I'm that person that will literally, I'm like that, that mom that pulls out like the pictures of like all their, all of her kids. And so I learned, I'm like, look at all this great stuff that we've made. And then like, you know, I show this to them and they're like, oh my God, I understand what this thing does. And, and that's usually when the light bulb happens. Uh, but I'm, I'm actually really curious to hear how you describe it, Pete, because I think that you're going to have a much more succinct answer than I do. No, you, you hit right on it with what you were doing there. Oh, really? Um, yeah, you definitely did. And um, for me, how I usually describe it to individuals is I, you know, I, I go, well, you know, I, I do. I start with 3D printing because that's something that yeah. a lot of folks know. So you got to start with that. And so I'll go, hey, so you understand. So you know what 3D printing is? And they go, yeah, I do. And then I go, all right, well, 3D printing starts with nothing. And then you build up additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And then I go, well, CNC machines, you just start with a hunk of metal and then we just cut stuff out of it until we get, you know, we subtract from it till we get what we want. And so it's just, it's basically kind of, it is the inverse of 3D printing mm -hmm. um, and which is goes to additive and subtractive manufacturing, which Tony, those are terms you might hear and other folks might hear kind of in, in the um, flying around. And so I explain it that way. I say, look, you know, like with a potter, think of it this way, if they're still having trouble, I then go like, all right, well, you know how a potter starts with the, you know, clay, they start with an empty wheel and they throw clay on it and they make a pot and they build it up. I said, well, that's 3D printing. We're more like Michelangelo, all right? Uh, with, you know, with, with the statue of David. We start with a giant block of something and then we chisel something out of it using the machine. And they go, oh, okay. And so I, I like to do that. I like to think that we're all Michelangelo. That's actually the best way to probably put it to somebody who, who knows nothing about digital fabrication. I think that's that's actually a really succinct way of putting it. But that's that's always the conversation to your point, Pete, like 3D printing. So I think so many people are aware of digital fabrication now because of 3D printing, even though CNC machining has been around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's really interesting to see like, even like I know people even in my, in my circle, they know they're familiar enough with 3D printing and they're like, oh, okay, you just do the reverse of that. That's interesting. But the Michelangelo one, that's actually really good. When you use that. Yeah, I've, I've played with the term 3D sculpting as at least a starting point because people can understand kind of sculpting. Okay, I take a thing and then, you know, shape it down. Um, yeah, okay, great. Th this is super helpful. It seems to me like actually the most effective answer is look at our Instagram. <laughs> That's my takeaway. Or ideally, if I could like pull something out of my wallet, be like, actually, it makes these. It makes stuff like this, you know, like and, and just kind of let it explain itself. Um, OK, great. Thank you for that. I, I think I think we're getting there. We're getting there in terms of being able to explain this. Um, and uh, in terms of why why this is useful you know i i saw brie the 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 owner of bantam tools demonstrate a 3d printer a lot maybe like 12 years ago at a, at a big event and i remember thinking like wow this is amazing the technology this is so cool it's going to change everything 
what am I going to use this for? <laughs> you know, and people have come up with all kinds of applications over the years. I feel like with a milling machine that the applications maybe are a little bit more immediately obvious because there's so many, uh, you know, existing functions that, are, that it kind of replicates. So can you maybe just throw me, I know there's so many uses, but some obvious common frequent examples of why a milling machine is useful, like what it makes. Well, what do you got, Pete? I'm going to let you take this one. First. Okay. Um, no, it, it's, it's, it's a very natural next question, right? So after you've shown everybody the Instagram feed or you explain, you know, art history or whatever it is of Michelangelo, the next thing is like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, what do you make with that? And then, and, and the simple question is, it's like, well, what do you want to make? It's really, it's, it comes down to, um, it's, we, as a company, we build the tools that allow you to make the parts for your tools or make the things for whatever you're doing, whatever that is. And it's out of something that's, you know, it, you know presumably solid metals, also plastics, things like that, uh, PCB boards as well. Um, but these, but the reason you'd want a CNC mill in your home or in your shop rather, um, is that it allows you just to kind of quickly prototype parts and try out different things. It's really strong if you're looking at making enclosures. Uh, for various things. So let's say you've created um, a small electronics, you know, uh, something, you know, something that measures a, a small electronics instrument uh, that measures something, uses a board, maybe, you know, um, met what, oh, Tony, you're holding up something. Calipers. What, what's this? Calipers. Yeah. So oh, I'm not hearing Tony right now, but, uh, but basically. Would I be able to prototype like the pieces for this, for example? Yeah, exactly. So you're holding up something that would have components in it, uh, electronic components and various different things, right? There's a small screen in there. You've got buttons, things like that. Well, now you can build the stuff that goes around that. You can even build the buttons if you really wanted to. Um, the idea is that you can just build those those smaller parts, um, smaller, smaller than like a car part um, or some car parts. Uh, so you can build those smaller parts and you can make that happen. Uh, so it's very helpful for that. I mean, right now, I'm sitting there, um, there's a Christmas gift that I'm going to be giving. And I was sitting there thinking like, man, I need something to like really hold this in that really like showcases what I'm giving. And I'm going to be able to do that uh, very quickly in some walnut uh, because I got some walnut hanging out, maybe some cedar. I don't know, but I can really quickly just kind of do that in wood and do something nice for this person. But I'm also sitting there thinking, man, I could do that in metal for some of the other stuff I have hanging out. Um, and so just custom, so just uh, custom enclosures. Um, so it's super pow powerful for that sort of thing. Um, and just for quick, like prototypes, anything that you want to hold in your hand and just kind of see like, is this going to work? And even for like functional parts, right? That I could, I can mill with metal. I can make gears. I can make things that, that work in, in uh, physical machines. We've got people buying it who are building custom uh, motorcycles and, and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. rockets. You know, when I explained this to my parents, my dad asked me, because I, I was kind of explaining to him who the customers are and how it goes everywhere from hobbyists to educators to small manufacturers to even people in the space industry. And he was like, huh, well, you're going to send one of these to Mars? And I was like, well, actually, yeah. You know, if you want to be able to go to Mars, you need to be able to build your own replacement parts as you go. And so something like this, absolutely, yes. Yes, we do want to send one of these to Mars um, because you need to be able to make stuff, whatever you might need. And you might not know what you're going to need in the moment. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good way of illustrating it. Amanda, do you have anything else to add in terms of like kind of uses for it? Um, no, I think Pete really nailed it on the head. I do think that something that's very interesting to me, um, especially because I'm, I'm always, you know, kind of tapped into the the CNC news and the just digital fabrication news in general. Um, and one of the things that I always find interesting, and this is also, I think the same case with a lot of like our remote residents uh, that we've had, a, a number of them have 3D printers and then they get the CNC machine. And um, what they find is I think up front, you, there's, there's a lot more upfront work with CNC machining in terms it, like depending on like what type of thing that you're designing like if you're working with svgs like that's kind of the beautiful thing about our software is we have um svg support in, in the bantam tool software 
So like that allows a little bit more, even more of a rapid um, approach to, to, you know, just starting to machine ASAP. But I think like a lot of people are always like, you know, with 3D printing, they're like, I want to press the button, I want to go. Um, but I think you, you have just as much versatility with a CNC machine. Um, and like our machine is a three axis machine. And so just keeping in mind, like, you know, there's so many, like understanding like the parameters of like how the machine works and that type of stuff. Um, it really opens up a lot of doors. And then, um, but yeah, the upfront work, going back to what I was saying, I'm rambling a little bit, but the, I think, I think comparatively, like compared to 3D printing, I think it's actually a lot faster for CNC machining. Like, yeah. it, like when I when I really compare like the time frame because like I'm like there's certain things that I think about I'm like if I was to machine this how long would it take me versus you know a 3D printer you know it, it might it it kind of a lot of more times it makes sense to see and see machine it than than 3D print it which is not which is, again like there's a place for 3D printing absolutely you know but it's that relationship is very interesting it, it, you're right a minute it kind of goes for the for the it's the right tool for the job first yeah, off 3d yeah. printing oh my gosh you know i remember thinking oh this is great and i was like oh yeah come back tomorrow morning it might be done and i'm like what it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, like, I've seen, like i've seen um oh god what's his name um his name is escaping but we have we have a, a gentleman that we follow on instagram joel joel Gadotz, i think his name is he does insane 3d print stuff and I remember chatting with him and I was like, how long did that make? And he's like, yeah, it took like, like 48 hours to make it. It was gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful. And it was definitely something that you would not ideally want to make in a CNC machine. But like, again, like just the, the different time frame and like, it, it just, it, it completely changes your workflow depending on like what type of digital fabrication your tool you're using. It's yeah. crazy. Well, I mean, and, and I guess the, the, but the beauty though, like you mentioned here with the CNC machines is ultimately it's about speed. And it's also yes. about the fact that you're working with, with metal. Yep. My gosh, you're working with metal, right? I mean, when you think about it, it's like, what would you rather have that's more durable? Something made out of, I mean, what's more durable? Something made out of plastic or something made out of metal. And in most cases you're gonna go, well, metal. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to do that, something that's stronger, that's durable, and then do it in a quicker amount of time, as far as like total volume goes, that makes total sense. And then you mentioned, and then Tony, did we lose you a little? And I just want to double check her with anybody yeah. else because Amanda mentioned uh, three axis milling. That implies that there's more than one axis. Yes. And and that's a whole nother thing. So, okay. All right. So that that's a perfect segue into kind of like digging a little deeper into the specifics of this because we're talking, you know, at a high level about why this is important and what we can do with it. But we haven't really talked about what the heck it actually is. Like, what does it mean to mill something, what 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 happens when you are milling a thing? It's, 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 it's a direct question. Is that what we're asking? Yeah, like, yes, I'm I asking. I, think I mean, it's you're. I mean, when we're machining something, right? And I guess since I'm the one who brought it up with three-axis machining, right? Yeah. So what I mean by it's a three-axis machine is you you're you have a machine that moves on the x y and z axes um and for without getting too far into the weeds let's just like keep those those three axes in mind so uh, actually amanda since we got it here right like yeah exactly axis, this is, is the across right the horizontal right. here and then mm -hmm. the plate here moves forward and backward you can see that it's on those two rails right so that's the y axis and then uh the actual uh we call this right. spindle, right? The the um, the the end mill. It's here, goes up and down, and so that's the z-axis. And so you basically have uh, left to right, up uh, forward and back, and then up and down, and that's that's the the three axes. Right. And so when you're designing, and again, just, we have to like take a couple of steps back before we go. Like, what happens when you're machining? And Pete, jump in, and because I think we have sometimes like I tend to to go a little too simplistic. It's not as, as simple as that, as I might make it out to seem, but like, so when I'm designing something in, in let's say fusion um, or, or Inkscape or Illustrator, uh, whatever, whatever your preferred software is, I'm always thinking, okay, I have these three axes to work with. Mm -hmm. And then with that in mind, that determines, you know, okay. Like when I go and make a feature, let's say, let's say, actually, let's talk about a 3d part. Let's just, go right. right forward if i'm talking like i'm gonna 
program or I'm going to design a 3D part in Fusion 360. Every time I make a feature, so like a like a whether it's a a sphere, like or a divot or some type of of you know you know design decision on that part, I'm always thinking that in the back of my head, okay, this looks cool, but can I machine this with my three axes? Which is again, like it's it sounds like you know it's it's like a checks and balance in the back of your head, and I think that's like for me personally, I don't know if this is your experience. But like when I was just starting out, I didn't have like that concept of the three axes fully down yet. And I think that's where like, once I got that and that clicked into my head, that helped enormously with not only designing my, my models, but then also like when I went to program my models, it mm. was like, okay, now this is the model that I have. It's this, let's again, going back to the sphere. I'm just gonna go with that. Cause it's like the most basic thing. <laughs> When I go and program my cam for that, I go, okay, again, I have a three axis machine. Uh -huh. you know, what, what, are the, what are the best tool paths to use to using a three axis machine? You're hitting on something though that I think is fundamental to building anything. Let's back up even yeah, out of CNC. Again, again. I'm gonna build a birdhouse, right? <laughs> and I wanna put something inside or I wanna, I wanna put a ship in the bottle, okay? How do I go about doing that? Right, because there's certain considerations you have in your mind when you're planning these things out, and those are the sort of things that you're touching on with a three-axis mill. It's like, okay, well, I got to figure out how I do this, this, and this. I mean, but you think about that, and builders think about that all the time whenever you're, you're creating anything. It's like, well, how am I going to do this? Even if you're thinking about how am I going to, uh, you know, put this rug down in the room. Well, you're going to say, well, I need, I can't put the couch in the room first. Right, so you're just kind of thinking through these things logically, just you know, with the limitations that are just natural inherent, and then it's just it's just working within. But also, those limitations also then end up also kind of being a strength. So I, I hesitate to use the word limitation. No, I don't think um, they're limitations. I think it's it's just like it's understanding like the. It's parameters. It's almost like because again, like I think like if you have two, it's it's one of those things. It's like the paradox of choice. When you have so many, like, no joke, like if I had so many different choices at my disposal when I first started out, I, I would have been like, I have no idea what I want to make and I would have no idea how I want to make it. You know, I think, I think the, that's like one of the beauties of having, you know, a three axis machine. Now, if I, you know, if let's say like, you know, I'm, you know, now I go and I look at like people who are machining on a fourth axis or fifth axis machine, it's easier for me to, understand like okay like i understand how they're doing that because i i go back to like what our machine is doing and i'm like okay three axis machine and then you go up the ladder a little bit like i it's, it's like one of those things that it's i think we're gonna have to save fourth and fifth axis for a future yeah, conversation yeah, no let's not get into that at all that's a whole <laughs> other can of but, but just let's to start let's keep with the three axis yeah <laughs> so yeah so i guess to sum up a little bit here ultimately what are we doing with this is that we're sitting here we're, we're starting with something we have an idea and a concept and we're looking at it and we're and then we kind of get so far we start to build it be like well wait a second how can we you know ha well things have to fit just right so we you know so we start kind of thinking about that like so we think about build volume in the mill we think about all right well if my if the if the end mill the part that's doing the cutting is coming from this direction and my part is oriented you know facing up this way how am i going to move that to make those cuts and so you kind of start thinking about the geometry a little bit in your design and you start thinking about the fact that how do i get a square corner if i have a round tool yep right if how do I make a square from something that's round? And so you kind of start running into some of those little design considerations as you go through the process. And like Amanda mentioned, the CAD process or computer aided design. This is just where you're sitting in a computer and you're making things in three dimensional space, right? That's the the CAD part of it. And then the follow up is is the is the CAM, which is where you're generating. The paths like this is how the tool is going to go in this is how it's going to engage this is how much it's going to cut at a time this is how deep it's going to cut this is the speed it's going to go this is how it's going to leave <laughs> the, you know this is how it's going to stop engagement with the piece this is how it's going to start engagement with the piece and all those other things you can really start getting into when you start doing the cam side of things so okay so so to step back and 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 kind of pick up where you're leaving there we, you know, we use this machine to make stuff. And the way that we do that is that there's, there's this, there's this kind of 
you know, little thing that's kind of like a drill bit, but it's not a drill bit. It's an end mill, which we'll talk about in a second. And it spins really fast and you put a piece of material on this and then it goes in there and, and it moves around so that it can cut into that material, cut away material in, in, in a shape. And it, all those three axes move around in such a way that you can make, you know, pretty cool, pretty complex shapes with this thing. Um, and so then what, what ends up happening is, uh, Amanda, you mentioned an SVG file earlier, just in case anybody doesn't know what that means, right? A SVG file is an image file format that is a vector file. So it's specifically, it basically gives you very specific instructions for how to draw an image that a machine like this can read. And so um, as opposed to like a JPEG image, like a photograph where it's, it's a bunch of, you know, basically a bunch of colors, it would be very hard to like machine a JPEG photo of something, uh, but an SVG file gives get, makes it easy for a machine to then draw something. So I imagine if I wanted to create something from scratch, like a custom design for you know something I wanted to make, I would potentially design an SVG file, um, and then well walk me through that process and take me through CAD CAM and G code and like how that ends up translating to the machine, but just very very simply. Amanda, did you want to try and take on SVG creation? Yeah, I can, I can, I can tackle that. And, and just the general broad strokes of yeah, vectors. General, general broad strokes. I guess let's, uh, Tony, because you have some fabulous artwork behind you. <laughs> um, I think one of the the best, because again, you mentioned uh, like just artwork in general. So let's say you take a picture of or a scan of that artwork on your wall. And like you want to machine a, a section of that design because you have some really nice, beautiful shapes there. I think the uh, you'd put that into a program like Illustrator or Inkscape. Um, I I work with Ink, uh, Inkscape quite a bit just because it's free. I enjoy it. Uh, and then so what I do I would do is I would pull that that JPEG file. Of or that scan that scan file of your art into Inkscape, I would then format that picture to be a scaled vector graphic. And so, once you have a scaled vector graphic, you basically then would I would then format the strokes and fills. And so the way that because that's those are that's really how our Bantam Tool software reads that SVG that you're creating. So, and, so, so essentially Amanda, like what, what you're describing here, just like, I'm gonna use this one because it's kind of like very straight lines. Like if I wanted to mill this in, you know, a material, so it's not marker mm -hmm. on paper, but it's actually drilled in, that eventually I need to be able to put this in a form where, I, where the machine understands how to move its, 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 its bit around, its, its end mill around to actually carve into the material in a pattern that matches the image that I want it to do, right? Right, so like the, kind of the first step is there, like you have the design file. So you're telling, like you have like the blueprint of what you want a machine. And then the beauty about our Bantam tool software is now you have um, the, the 2.5D AutoCam in our tool library. So what we have done with the Bantam tool software is if people go, if you download the Bantam tool software at bantamtools.com slash, I think it's software download. And, and uh, you, you download for either Mac or your Windows and you pop that up and you put the SVG in there. What you're gonna get is this, this preview of your plan after you, after you formatted and saved that file as an SVG file. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you'll notice like you'll have the great thing about our real-time preview is that not only will it show the, the plan preview, but it'll show the tool paths. Those tool paths that are generated are based on the, the speeds and fees recipes that we have built into the Bantam tool software. So and you, so, go ahead, Pete. Oh, I was gonna say you're hitting on a few things there with feeds and speeds and that's a, that's a whole nother. nother yeah, I mean, thing. it's a whole other thing. I mean, I think for the sake of simplicity right now, cause again, I think that as we're getting going, like this is just like things that we're probably gonna I think what people are gonna really quickly realize from this conversation is it's it's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of different things to, to go down the rabbit hole on. Okay, um, so let's uh, actually, I'll, I'll zoom out on that real quick for a second because we just speeds and feeds comes up a lot. I had to catch up on what that means, but it's just to kind of explain that to folks, 
you know, from the very basic perspective, when we're cutting into a piece of material with this end mill, um, this end mill is made of material itself, hard material, and this thing might be hard material. It might be a, a, a piece of metal that might be very hard. And um, the speed with which this thing spins and the speed with which it moves back and forth over the material is incredibly important because if we move either of those things too fast, the, uh, it could break because this material could be difficult to kind of cut through, um, but you also potentially get benefits from moving it. Uh, certainly if you move it faster, the job gets done faster, but there's other kind of benefits to these things. We'll get into all those details, but there's a lot of nuance of, to the combination of the thing you're cutting with, the thing you're cutting into and how you're approaching doing that. And so this conversation about speeds speed, which is like the speed of the thing turning, and then the feed, which is the rate, the feed rate that at which it moves, um, is something that is an integral part of planning a project. So you don't just kind of like throw an image into the system and hit print and assume that it's just going to do everything for you. However, my understanding is that the band of tools software does make it a little bit easier to step through this process. But but let's be clear here too, because I think there's a wonderful there's a thing here with, with 3D printing in which we always talk about like oh just just put it in there we hit print it it's the age of Star Trek it's the replicator right the aptly named um, and so there is some of that but still someone took the time to program and do all the stuff right. ahead of time so that thing that you're taking is somebody that's taking all the time to do all that so you're kind of you're more or less initially if you're just if you're just going if you're approaching 3d printing that way you're using what someone else has already made and you're just you're just hit and go um, whereas if you're creating something from scratch you're going to be doing the same amount of work um, or maybe even more work uh, than what you are when you're jumping into fusion you're actually doing uh, CAD work for for uh, millet and so you know I, I let's yeah, I kind of want to couch that a little bit or just kind of point that out um, that it isn't necessarily, it's just quicker because you're starting further in the process, but you've lost all the customization. And then, so the beauty here with what we're doing is that, you know, we're, we're also giving you a platform in which you can learn more about the customization. And SVGs um, are a great way to kind of start with that because an SVG is literally, it's just, it's a, to the computer, it's here's a dot at this point on X, Y, and Z. And here's a dot on this point on, you know, X, X, Y or on a, on a plane, there's two dots and this is the line that goes between them, right? Which is natural movement for an end mill. Uh, so on a three axis CNC milling machine, right? And so it's just like, here's a dot, here's a dot, take, go from this dot to this dot and a straight line or go from this dot to this dot and an arc. And so the, that's the very basic thing that you're saying that you're displaying is that line when you, with, with SVG art and with vector art. And that's exactly what the, the mills are reading going, oh, dot, dot, line to it. Okay, I move at this speed. And then what Amanda was getting at is that our software has built in settings, feeds and speeds uh, for the various uh, end mills you might use, the, the part that does the cutting. And, and you just tell it do that, you just choose that and it just goes. And so it's a really easy way to get started uh, with CNC milling, and very approachable. And it's also really great. And this is again, going back to, to thinking about when I first started out, you know, just, just messing around with the PCB mill and kind of learning about speeds and feeds, learning how to work with SVG files and even um, G code files, which I, I don't know if Pete, you're going to jump into that or how much you want to jump into that. <laughs> um, because that's, it's, it's an exciting discussion, but it's also, it, we, can, we can go down the rabbit hole on that discussion. But uh, looking at the different recipes in the tool library, that gave me a jumping off point to understanding how, because like Tony mentioned, there's speeds, there's feeds, there's also a uh, step over and there's step down. There's, there's a couple of different numbers that go into this recipe. That's why we call it a speeds and feeds recipe. Um, so like, understanding how those things relate to one another and then running and then like you know because and then the great thing about the tool is i could create my own recipes so like i could go and say well what does what is what is bantam tools programmed for a quarter inch end mill and i would go okay this is what they have you know what happens if i adjust this uh recipe slightly or you know i want to go a little slower because maybe i'm you know, I'm, I'm a little nerd, I'm a little hesitant to go so fast because I'm a, a complete noob. Um, 
you know, how does, how does this impact how that, that end mill travels through the material? And I think that's like, it's a really great way to, to one, get machine, like, like you say, Pete, like to get machining quickly, but then also it's a great tool to, to begin to learn and really dig your teeth in and understand how these things relate to one another. And as far as learning goes, I mean, that's something that's always been great about the Bantam Tools uh, desktop milling machines oh, is that oh, they're, totally. they're great tools for learning. And then now with the Bantam Tools desktop CNC milling machine and the update to the Bantam Tools uh, milling machine software is that now we have the ability, we have the speed and feed override baked in. So now you can sit there and go, hey, let me adjust this just a little bit. And then you're going to start to kind of see, you can see how, how these things interact. So it's kind of a, a kind of a safe way to, to try things out on the fly while you're going mm -hmm. and actually have that confidence too, that, hey, maybe if you, maybe if you overestimated how aggressive you could get with something and then you start listening to it and, and you're going to hear, it, you're going to be like, oh, that doesn't sound like it's, like it should. That sounds, you know, and it sounds like it's working harder than I'd like. <laughs> so then you maybe, maybe you just dial it back slightly, right? Or, and, and this is the fun thing about CNC, and this is a whole other thing. Sometimes you actually just need to go faster. And in most cases, sometimes you do. It's, it's almost always you just need to go faster if it doesn't quite sound right. That's a whole, that's a whole thing, Tony. And I'm not even going yeah, to. Yeah, I don't know if you want to get that just yet. But I do. I'm glad that you actually <laughs> mentioned that, though, P. I'm glad you mentioned the speed and feed override feature because that's something that's another feature that i'm in in the the latest version of our software um i'm really excited to to use more because of it, like before like this latest version of the software every time that i i had like i didn't love the sound how like that and i think again this comes with time and grade like what pete's saying you know how a cut sounds the, it's one of those things that the more you you do it and the more you listen to your mill and the more you you cut different materials you start to realize like, Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Or you're like, oh, that sounds fantastic. And it's like, it's just one of those things that you, like you only understand implicitly, like as you continue to go and you continue to do. Um, but in terms of like speeds and feeds, it's, it's, you don't have to, using that override feature, you don't have to stop your job, go back to the drawing board, input all those, those, you know, different ingredients into your recipe again. You can literally, while you're machining, you can adjust. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, again, like to your point, Pete, you know, you start to learn like, oh, I needed to go faster there. Or, <laughs> oh, I, you know, or, oh, like, you know, I needed to go faster, but maybe the feed rate needed to be a little bit lower or maybe the feed rate needed to go up. Like I, that's like something that like, again, like you just learn as you go. Um, well, and it, it and seems like, you know, so there's clearly a learning curve here and we, you kind of work your way into a certain comfort level with working with this machine. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we've got things that can help lower that learning curve. Um, there's the getting started projects, which really kind of make it very easy to get started. Uh, and you kind of have to clear certain hurdles. So just for me, having uh, set up this PCB mill, which is the previous model, uh, to the one that we're selling now, um, it took a few steps just to get to the point where I could start cutting something in terms of making sure I had the right end mill, making sure I had tape to tape down the material, uh, some of the other things that I need to clean and maintain the machine. Uh, but I did a getting started project. I downloaded the uh, file that I could feed right into the software, and then it, it, it kind of stepped through it very easily. So like when I made this, this is the kind of the, the PCB badge project, right? And it cut out of this material. Like I had to learn how to set up the machine, plug it in, how to tape it down onto the, uh, onto the plate. And then ultimately I ran this project and I didn't have to think about speeds and feeds. I didn't have to ever know that that phrase existed to be able to produce this successfully. And now at least I have a starting point to have cleared all those hurdles. And I can see how now well, I know what it looks like when a machine is, when, it, when it's tuned, when it's dialed in correctly. I can see what it looks like when the end mill is doing its thing and it's looking real confident and cruising through. And so now I'm, you know, maybe, okay, this is cool. What if I wanted to swap out a different image? Great, now I can learn that and then eventually graduate to how do I, you know, make a three-dimensional object from scratch from an arbitrary material. So we're going to like have to kind of work our way up to these things um, as we go. 
but Tony, as you're sitting here explaining this and going through this, I'm, I'm, I'm literally right now, I'm just sitting there thinking about like a wonderful analog for all this is simply cooking, yep. right? There are certain things that as, you know, we're new people on earth, <laughs> right? We're children and <laughs> nothing makes sense. Nothing in that kitchen. Just, it, we don't have any concept. We just know that food comes out of there. If we're lucky enough, there's somebody in our, in our life that provides food or it comes from a restaurant and food appears and it's awesome. And we, and we really take it for granted, right? Until fast forward and you're doing it yourself. And then you go, oh, well, okay. Um, but my point is, is that when you're doing this, there's a lot of these things that you're still, you know, you have to learn how to boil water, right? That's one of those first things. Oh, here's how you boil water. Um, and so you, you learn that sort of thing. But, and then once you got the fun, because think about everything it takes to, to boil water, right? Uh, to boil a cup of water. You have to measure out a cup. So you go, okay, so this is what I use to measure. You learn that fundamental, right? And then you go, okay, well, I got to turn the stove on. So you figure out how to turn the stove on. You learn that you need to turn it to high because low is not going to get it there. And so there's all these little things you learn just in the steps of boiling a cup of water for the first time. And then you build on that and you go forward and it's very natural um, as you get going. You learn, you learn, you know, with knives, you learn how to chop versus dice, right? What's the difference between chopping, dicing, slicing? And so those sort of things. And then a wonderful thing too, also, if you want to think about great analogs, is that big noisy kitchen blender you have, right? You know when you've put too much in it because you can hear it right? You're not a blending expert, most of us. We're not blending experts, but we know that doesn't quite sound right. And that's the sort of thing Amanda was getting at a little bit with the sound of the mill, right? And so there are some inherent things that, and some knowledge that you have that you probably don't even realize that's just going to come very natural as you go through it. And once you get over that initial hurdle, that intimidation of being in the kitchen for the first time, mm -hmm. and you've made your PCV badge like you did there, then the next steps get to be a lot less, they're a lot less intimidating. And it's, a, um, and it's exhilarating as you get to build on these things and, and build on everything you've done. And Amanda has done a wonderful job and the whole team here has done a wonderful job in trying to put together these guides, like you were mentioning, Tony, that allow us to kind of build. Here's a concept, here's another concept. And you kind of build on it and you go forward from there. And then, you know, you, you go forward. And the next thing you know, you're an experience maker, right? You're doing something, you know, fantastic. And then you're doing the stuff that all of us here are going, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think just to echo what Pete has said that I'm glad that you, you mentioned, like, I think it's something that we, that we don't necessarily say enough like as a team at Bantam Tools sometimes because I, you know we just do it because we, we want to get people machining ASAP and we want them to learn about this stuff because like you said like it's exciting when they just they we get them rolling and the next thing you know they're over there and you're like we go how did you do that like we want all of the design files to just just show us because we want to just understand how you did that because it's so fantastic um but this idea of getting people comfortable and and that's really like every getting started project every like how to video or support article that's really our goal is to always make like make it so that not to say that like you know cnc machining is is easy because i don't think that you know it's necessarily a it's not necessarily like when you look at it, you're like oh that's not easy but like when you actually do that you learn it and you're like oh i understand it and you you bring people into this world it lowers that that threshold to get into it. And that's when it gets really exciting. And I think it's, it's like you said, P like to, to lower that intimidation factor. Like I remember, like I can remember machining the PCB match project. Like you did Tony. I remember like turning the thing on. And I'm like, Oh my God, I hope I don't break this thing. Even though like, I know like I'm not, there's no way I can break this. Like, you know, I have all the speeds and feet. Like I have the file it's already programmed. Like there's no way I can mess this up. But like, but I did, I messed up my Z height. Um, I did not measure my Z height correctly. I did not account for the double-sided nitto tape. Your, your Z that, height, so that, uh, that's um, like the, how thick this is basically. Yeah, right? the Z height. And, and so like when you add a complete newbie, right? When you add the double-sided nitto tape, when you tape it onto to the, to the bottom of your, your FR1 board oh, and you yeah. stick it on the spoil board, you have to account for that tape. Did not realize that my first time around, even though I read it, in the, even though I read it in the support guide, it was in there. The machine is, the machine is going to come down here and it needs to know how far down to go. 
before it's right. going to reach the board, right? And then and and like where the bottom is, and you're talking about a very narrow range of space here in order to to actually touch the material. But so like if you if you calculate it the wrong way, then it just like hovers over and doesn't cut anything. If you calculate it the wrong way, the other way, it goes all the way through, and then you get what has in, uh, taught me is called a Z crash when it crashes into the. <laughs> hey, is this, do yep. I have that right? Yeah, you totally nailed it. And, uh, and Tony, I am so proud of you because you had your first Z crash right there on the phone with me. And then, so they're like, okay, so you're going to power this thing on and, you're, and I hear it and I hear it and I'm like, and I'm just about ready to tell you where that E stop is and you're just going for it. And it's just like, all right, well, this is how you learn. This is how you learn. I was just it sad was, I wasn't rolling at that, per, at that <laughs> moment to capture it. No, it, everybody does it. And it, it, look, here's the deal. And there's, there's, because if you think about it this way, that there's, there's, we have stops in the CNC mill, right? That keep it from going too far left or right. There's, you know, it, it physically can't, but it will keep going as deep as it needs to go because it just doesn't know how long that that tool is. Um, and there's, but there's plenty of warnings in there yep. that'll tell you if you're if you're taking your if you're taking your time and you're reading the little red boxes we've got set up, so it's going to give you warnings and this sort of stuff. We have ways now with conductive stock probing, which is unique uh, to a mill, especially in this in this uh, in this space. This yeah, this space yeah. Um, where we're not spending thousands upon thousands of dollars, right? What is conductive uh, stock probing? Yeah, so conductive probing. So with our mill, um, on the there's the bed itself, right, which is where everything sits. That's made of metal, and then in the spindle, the part that then the motor that's moving around and actually holds the cutting tool. Um, there's the other part of that there. So between those two, we've got it set up so that it will we can measure electric current going in between the two. So a small little electric current. So there's an indicator. Um, built in to the system. So that way, when you complete that loop, it knows what's happened. So that's how we can measure the distance of the tool, like how far up or down you've put it, because no matter how good you are, when you take that tool out of the collet and you put another tool back in, you're never going to get it to be exactly the same length down to a thousandth of an inch. Okay. You're not that good. Okay. We're talking less than, you know, uh, half the thickness of a sheet of paper. Okay that we're able to measure the difference on, or even more so measure the distance on, but that's, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a thou, okay? Um, and so we're working at that sort of level. And so then to have that um, conductive probing where you can sit there and you can go, all right, this is the length of the tool. And so you get that figured out. And then we've taken it one step further. We go, oh, wait a second. We've got a uh, metal in here that's also conductive. And so we know that we can go ahead and we can set up now and you can use that tool and you can just touch that tool to the top of the, the metal that you're gonna cut or the side or some other part of it. And you're gonna get measurements using you know, the, the precision of the software and the precision of the mill, you're able to kind of figure that sort of stuff out. And that's mm -hmm. very, very powerful once you start going and you get into it. Um, and, it's, and it's those things that allow us to go you know, prevent um, the likelihood of Z crashes and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, the mill's going to do what you tell it to do. So, yeah. you know, be, be mindful of what you're telling it to do. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's actually really funny. It's, and this is something that I learned very pretty early on is like, if there's um, an issue or there's some type of crash nine times at 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it's a me problem, not a machine problem. <laughs> And I like, I go back through all my steps and I'm like, oh, that's why. And that's like, to your point, Pete, and, and also Tony's like in talking about the Z height and stuff like that. I'm really excited about the automatic probing routines. That's like gonna, it's just been, I know for me, like even just using it, I have a, I have a PCB mill um, in my, in my little apartment right now. And I can use the automated, the automated probing routines with that. And so like, you know, with the, with the, the desktop CNC milling machine, it's, you know, it's just as powerful, if not more so, I think, especially now that we have like the, the T-slot bed and that type of stuff. It's just, it makes, it makes setup so much, like, I feel like, I feel like so much more confident that I can, I can use the automated probing materials. I was confident like before the automated probing routines, because like we have such like awesome software and just the PCB mill was just a great tool in general but the automated program routines make me feel just that much more confident. It's like, I've measured this stock. 
I know that it's set up in the right position on my spoil board in the PCB mill, but now like, you know, in the C the desktop scene simulation machine, the automated programming routine is going to be like just that much more like confidence being like, this is where my material is at. This is where my plan is placed. I have all the little, like the beautiful thing. I like all my little boxes checked off. <laughs> I can read it in the summary tab. That's, I love the summary tab. It's great. <laughs> Less trial and error. Less trial. Like, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, no, like, I think this is actually more so something that happens once you get really comfortable with the machine and you get more, and you know, if you're, if you've been machining for a while, it's very easy to just run through the steps very quickly. Um, because setup on, on our machines is, it's super fast. I think like Pete, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's, it's a pretty fast process. Mm -hmm. And so it's like to have that, that last tab and go, Hey, here's the summary of your job like check this over, does it all check out? And then also on top of that, like Pete was mentioning, you have like, you know, if there are any potential, is there, if there is any potential for, you know, some type of collision, I know about it before I, before I start milling, you know, and I don't, I don't run it into the bed, you know? Yeah. Well, you also get that not only through the warnings, you also get through the, the 3D visualization that's built in right, exactly. the 3D yeah, preview. Exactly. You can see it right there. You look at it, you go, hang on. Yeah. That doesn't look like, oh, okay, that's why I'm using the, the incorrect tool or, or maybe, oh, yeah, that's right, in, in Fusion or whatever. I programmed it at the wrong height and, oh, that's what it is. And so you've got that one more thing. Uh, you've got one more thing to kind of give you that sort of confidence in that check. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. I don't know, Tony, are you, are you lost? Did we... Yeah, I was gonna what say else, like, what else like, you want to know? This was for you, and you yeah, just got else, a man and I just know. I feel like me and Peter just going off on a tangent right now. <laughs> With like, I, I think it's just so great how passionate you both are about the topic and 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 the um you know the excitement that you have for making it easier. You can see how there are different components to this that can make it you know, easier to do good work for, for other folks who are going to be using this over time. And so, you know, for everybody who's tuning in we're really creating stuff that will help make it easier for you to use this machine and understand all these terms when the time is right in the point in the process when it becomes useful to you. Mm -hmm. So when you have a question about, okay, I wanna make a thing and I'm running into this concern or this challenge, Pete and Amanda and, and, and the material that the team is generating to educate people about this, uh, the whole point is to make it so that when you have that question, you can go and find the answer that you need. And so that's really where we're, where we're coming to with this. And uh, we're hard at work at building that out and making, making more of all of that stuff uh, in the near future. And so I'm, I'm glad that I get to talk to you both about it. And I hope that we get to do another conversation like this again, and, you know, dig into some more of the specifics. For sure. uh, but I think, uh, I think it's been really great to just kind of touch on all of this a little bit. Uh, did you did it look like maybe Pete you had maybe one more yeah one more. I just wanted I just want to make sure and, and make it clear that at the end of the day the three of us we're the marketing team okay and so we know a lot <laughs> we're not the ones building this thing we're not the engineers all right we're not the designers so right? if you we think this is a heavy to, to use conversation the trust me we can we can dive a lot deeper <laughs> let's get those engineers in there and there's you know and there's things and i've been trying my best i know we all have to make sure it's like all right am i am i getting this right because you know we only get too far in the weeds because there's some very very talented people that are here now that have uh you know that have been here before me uh long before most of us have been here and, the, and the, we're building on the work of others and that's something that you know i, I want to make very clear and we're building the work of a great community too that's allowed us to come to the table and it allows us to come together and build these sort of things uh, for our community, right? And so we're very much a part of that community and it's very exciting to be here and, and try and make it easier and help expand that community. And I think also just to piggyback off of that statement too, like the, you know, right now like we're, we're creating as much materials like within the conversations that we're having with our engineers, with our software team, like we're making all these support materials and also with our community, you know, I think the thing that also just to, to echo, cause I think we say this a lot and I, I always like to just remind people, like if there is a question that you guys have, ask it, like DM us, hit it, like email us at resources at bantamtools.com. Like 
reach out to our support team at support at tools.com. Like all the, like we have, like we're here for you guys and we want to answer your questions. And also like, like I, like personally, like I've, I've watched like a couple of our users be like, have a question about this thing. And we're like, we're going to, we're going to do a how to on this today. You guys, you, you've been asking how you do thread milling and we're going to do thread milling today. <laughs> Oh, like, that's fun. For, for, for an example, like that was like that how to was something that a lot of people were were curious if it like could be done with the PCB mill, and we did it with the PCB mill, and then we did it with the desktop CNC milling machine, and that was like I think like a desktop CNC milling machine is, is way better suited for for making those types of those types of parts. But I guess it's a toss up. But the the yeah, just stuff like that, like reaching out to us with questions, like we want to we want to give you guys answers. Like if you guys have questions and you're not finding it anywhere, like we want to help you guys get the answers to that question. If we can answer them, you know what I mean? That's the other thing too. Like, you know, and a lot of times if we don't know the answer, we're going to, we're going to find out the answer. <laughs> and uh, just so that everybody's clear, uh, thread milling, I had to look this up too, but um, it's basically like a screw hole, right? So like the, the threaded yeah, I, kind of, Yep. space Threading. into which you would screw something right yep. or the screws themselves if you wanted to you can do it the other way yeah you right. have the hole the holes which are internal threading right pete and then you have the external threading which is the the actual screw itself I believe because it's, it's, it's actually a pretty incredible thing when you think about it to have like a piece of metal uh i'm not going to disassemble my keyboard but like this thing screws in to this piece of metal right here right and there's like, there's a little groove in here that's made out of one solid piece and it has to fit perfectly for this to work. And so there has to have been a machine that was able to like dig into this piece of metal and make that groove perfectly fit so that this thing can screw into it correctly, right? And so those grooves have to line up exactly right for this to work. And that's what thread milling is. And it's a very like, it's a it's a delicate science, right? Yeah, Tony, you just another great example of everyday ship in the bottle uh, thinking, and I, I love it. And that's the thing, and that's what uh, getting into making and in, in, in CNC milling um, is going to do for you. You're going to start looking around, and you're going to be looking at things in awe and wonder, like, how do they do that? You're going to be taking things apart you shouldn't be, and it's going to be awesome. It's it's very addictive. And it, it's, it's cool. It's very cool to be able to walk into the world and have that awe and that appreciation of all the things that are made, just like when mom came out with those wonderful uh, meals and you're like, oh, okay, now you have a much greater appreciation of all those things. So how thank you to all the moms that? out there. Yeah, how do you do that? It's like magic. <laughs> there's a really nice feeling when, it, when you break down that barrier of like, how do they do that? And then there's how do I, uh, wait, could I do it too? Um, that's the real, that's the real cool part is when you go, Oh, how do they do that? And it's like, Oh, I can do that. And then and like, that's like, that's like a really cool feeling when you realize like, Oh man, I can make this, I can make this like, right. Now. I can pull out, I can pull out my machine and I can make this right now. Yeah. And I, I had that experience just having milled this for the first thing I've ever milled really on my own with lots of help from both of you. Thank you. But that I did this in my house and, and just like, wow, I made this cool like now i want to now i want to go hog wild like now i want to make stuff and um, <laughs> feeling so all right let's wrap it up it for folks who are tuning in where where do they find out more where should we go we've got bantamtools.com uh at bantam tools on uh instagram twitter facebook uh we've got a youtube channel as well uh what else where where, where else should people find us get in touch with us um resources at bantamtools.com is another great one uh, that's, that's, if you're, if you're looking to get in touch with this more like uh, general questions or marketing, that's usually resources. If you have more specific tech questions or, you know, you're, you want to maybe talk to, to someone like an engineer, you, you probably want to get in touch with a support team, uh, support at bantamtools.com. But, um, but yeah, bantamtools.com is always a great starting place. And also all of our, our social channels is another great place to just get in touch with us. And also like, if you have a question and you don't know who to ask, reach out on social. I think that's always a, a really great way to get in touch with us. I'll also mention if you have a machine, support.bantamtools.com. 
will be your knowledge base. We're beefing that up with tons of answers to your most common questions and your less common questions. Pete, did you have something you wanted to say before we wrap it? No, so, uh, no, you nailed it. I, 15, 20, 20 places to keep in touch with us. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty findable. Like, yeah. you got to try not to find us. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. BamTools.com, check it all out. Yeah, Google Bam Tools. Go. Put, up, put up the big rooster sign. We'll look up. You might see it in the sky. <laughs> Pete, Amanda, that. we do need you, to make that. Thank you so much for taking the time, hanging out with me, explaining all this. Let's do it again real soon. And um, well, I'll see you in the bent of Slack in like five seconds. But yeah, good talking to you. Later, guys.